Mm -hmm. I'm here with Dr. Chris Besson from Simple Food Project and Herbsmith, and she is going to speak to us today about DCM. So my questions with DCM, my main questions, I like to talk about legumes, any nutrients with legumes, and what should we do? What you know? What is our best route here? Do we avoid legumes completely? Do what? what what should we do? We're all scared. We don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you know, the FDA has done such an amazing job of identifying <clears throat> that there's a problem, although small, um, a small percentage of the pet population has been affected. But I think it is to the point that we need to be proactive about what we do with our pets. And the number one thing is that taurine um, comes from meat and seafood and does not come from grains, does not come from legumes. The most recent um, update that came out in July really linked the majority of cases to dry kibble and the majority of cases to super high concentrations of peas and lentils. And unfortunately, that does affect what's called grain-free, And but it's probably not all grain-free, it's green free that has really high concentrations of pea, particularly. And the downfall is <clears throat> within the ingredient deck, you can split the pea, pea concentration. So you can call it pea fiber and pea protein and pea flour and pea isolate. You can call it all these different names and you can list it individually on the ingredient deck. So when you go back and look at it, the ones that were most affected in this dietary diet, dietary dilated cardiomyopathy were ones that had a crazy amount of pea protein. So it's just not species appropriate. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter is, and I can understand that we're all trying to feed the world and that we're trying to make pet food as cost effective as possible, um, but it just got pushed too far, is, is my opinion. <clears throat> so what can we do as proactive pet parents? While the FDA is doing this amazing job of collecting data, analyzing data, and trying to find the root of this, let's just protect our pets. And what was really kind of, a couple of things really came out of the data, and one is that some dogs had high taurine levels and some dogs had low taurine levels. But all of them responded to taurine supplementation. So, so with that being said, that's what we want to do. And then how do we go about doing it? So we can either do a taurine supplement, which Herbsmith does have one of them. It's called Taurine Boost. Or we could just use real food. And if you're eating chicken breast for dinner, give some chicken breast to your dog. If you're eating salmon, give some salmon to your dog. But I think that a, a key deciding feature of this whole thing is where does taurine come from? Taurine comes from meat and seafood. It does not come from legumes and it does not come from grain. So to go all the way back to a high grain diet is to me like throwing out the baby with the bath water. Instead, let's go with a species appropriate diet. So dogs are absolutely carnivores and even if you said they're omnivores with a tendency towards being a carnivore. Long canines are absolutely, they should have higher meat content. So if you need to use the grain-free food that you're using and you're worried, add some meat or some seafood back in. Try to get as close to a true carnivore, species-appropriate diet as you can. And to me, it's that easy. Eventually, we're gonna find out what is the root of this? We have fabulous cardiologists. We have amazing FDA professionals that are investigating this and are like methodically going through the, the data and exploring all different hypotheses. And until then, until we know, pet parents can just protect their pets with real food. That's what I'm telling my clients. That's what I'm telling the massive amount of people that contact me pretty much every day because there's fear. There's fear. And anytime there's fear, we automatically revert back from the good healthy food we are feeding 
back to 40 years of, you know, old grain, high grain, high meat meal diets. And I don't blame anybody because that's, you know, you're fearful and you're trying to make the best decisions for your pets. And, and I would say, keep it species appropriate. Okay. Especially, especially being here, so going through all the different booths, all the different dog food companies, it seems like almost every dog food company right now is just throwing out lines of food that are now grain inclusive, which, which is, it's good. At the same time, you know, and I'm not a vet, I'm not a nutritionist, but at the same time, I do feel like we're just going backwards. Exactly. Now, instead of the food being filled with lentils and peas and, you know, all that sort of stuff, now we're going to fill it with oats and barley and it just I agree it, and it feels like we're just going back it's this pendulum yeah and so the pendulum swings and and the higher up you are the cheaper it is so high grain diets are really inexpensive and then the pendulum swung the opposite direction and went to a high starch diet but from peas and lentils and potato and what we really need to be is somewhere in the middle just sit down which here yes unfortunately is expensive yes meat is is a richer more bioavailable source of protein that carnivores need unfortunately it costs a little more yep. but i would say that um for the pet parents that come to me keep an eye out for when meat is on sale yep. there's always sales on turkey or chicken or even seafood and when you see that stock up yeah. and then you have it for future use. Would adding eggs like one egg a day is that beneficial? Does that help with the taurine issue? Because I am seeing a lot of um, bloggers saying oh you know you just throw an egg in there and that's going to help with the taurine issue but I'm hearing more people such as yourself all saying we want to add chicken, beef, fish. Yeah, I is think that, that more, more what we're leaning towards. I think egg does have some taurine, but okay. not nearly not as much. Okay. As like um, heart. So if you okay. added chicken heart, that's a fabulous source of taurine. Yes. But I would really go with more organ and skeletal meat okay. and seafood. Okay. Um, because that is your really your richest source of taurine. And so when I'm saying adding some back into their diet, it does. You could. Feed the kibble that is working for you, the kibble that's fabulous, but then add back in, say, even an ounce or two of chicken breast. It doesn't have to be a crazy amount. It doesn't have to be, just add some. Yeah. And then you're gonna give the heart the targeted nutrition that it needs. Um, I've, and maybe I'm, I'm incorrect, but I think I'm okay, um, is that <laughs> I've been referring people to feed simple food as far as if they maybe they cannot afford it, for their entire diet, but if they're feeding kibble and just adding in even a quarter cup of this, because when you look at your box, you have heart included in all of your formulas. And yeah. that's a big thing right there. So I've been telling people, it's like, if you can't 100% afford it, even if you add a quarter cup, that's still exactly It's, it's just you're, anything you're you do it. is gonna increase the plain yes. in nutrition. And when we formulated, I formulated the Simple Food Project, I said, what is the closest to what they really eat in the real world? And that's how we formulated it. So we have organ meats and we have skeletal meat. And so when we did taurine levels on our food, they're super high, 70 to 85% meat, just the way it should be. Um, so you don't really have to worry about taurine if you're feeding real meat. So even raw fed, you know, when people are feeding raw, you're generally feeding higher amounts of meat content in organ. You're covered. You're good. It's not going to change genetically induced dilated cardiomyopathy. Yes. So if you have a doe, a Doberman who has a genetic propensity to her, towards it, it's not going to stop it. But what I would say is, again, targeted nutrition. If your dog has a propensity to a heart condition, it's even more important that you, that you yeah. feed a species appropriate yes. diet. It's even more important that you make sure that they have adequate levels of taurine and L-carnitine. That is fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for your time. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. You guys can do it. And and squelching the fear by being proactive is exactly what you need to do. We're going to find out the answer to this eventually, but it's so simple to protect your pet. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. <laughs>